This is M.L. Kreider, author of The Interims. All literary information can be found at theinterims.com. Teaser 2, Roberta. It was no secret that Roberta Davis's son had tuberculosis since the age of four. Roberta was one of those lucky people whose job fit like a shoe. She must have weighed 300 pounds, mostly her heart, but had the face of an old child when she wasn't pissed off, when her breath trailed off a cliff before the words that spewed from her mouth. She ate red gala apples, not donuts like the rest of everybody else. Roberta ran things around here and nobody minded. Most everyone was touched by the passion with which she conducted specific cases, rare ones, that she seemed to pick from the forgotten vat of boxed tribulations when more pressing situations were not batter up in the cramped hallway file closet of the Social Services Division at NYPD. Her office smelled of old printing toner and the scent of a bad holiday candle that tried to cover it. Roberta was a walking, talking contradiction. A calm volcano that kept everyone just uncomfortable enough to stay on cue. Her awards in old frames, great and small, hung like family photographs in clusters. There were so many of her clippings that grateful organizations and families had framed for her, and a card tree that held the gushing sentiments of over 700 city families and hardships that she had helped to reunite or ameliorate over the years. She preferred to be called Miss Roberta, not Mrs. Davis, even though she had been once divorced and twice widowed. Roberta had earned the respect of her constituents. In all of her 24 years at NYPD, she never once asked for a bigger office or any of the other perks that come with loyalty in one's time, well invested. She seemed to be one of those folks who thrive with certain things that stay the same. Miss Roberta had an innate laser for choosing her battles wisely when it came to child cases in the city. Most everybody was enamored by her southern turn, big city sense of tradition she kept, come what may. Once, her grown daughter bought the whole department home, homemade oatmeal raisin cookies for Mother's Day, that kind of thing. Maybe she was just like that, or perhaps Miss Roberta knew a thing or three about psychology. Either way, her methods worked and worked non-stop and most all of the time. There existed no reason to dispute her work or her logic about how to go about even the most criminal or darkest of cases. Roberta liked people around and the cramped office was as natural for her as the eight brothers and sisters she had grown up with in the South. This particular day, the volcano was not calm. Boys, I mean it now. I don't need to be looking at you here. You go on. You go find that three days missing boy, Jacob Steidelhauser. Caucasian, 12 years of age, brown, blue, four foot one. His mama was found in the Hudson by boating fishermen at 9 a.m. last Sunday morning. It's been 72 hours since his disappearance from Charity House. This one just made an enemy. Takes talk today. You didn't get this job, because we don't believe in you, so show me something. You go get that boy as if he is your own. Now I'm about done grappling with what happens around here after the fact. I don't want any more facts and I'll be in all week in the wake instead of ahead of the damn boat. Go get ahead of this one, then you'll have done your job. Go! What you looking at? Murphy will meet you at the A in 25. She stopped them once more. Vanguard? Vanguard was the intern. Gerald was his name. He had just begun subbing cases at the precinct shy of two weeks ago. Vanguard, you take the A and get the whole nine on this boy's house, neighbors, and asses. It's your first official assignment. She glanced down at the growing paper pile that some neurotic, people-pleasing brunette had been delivering in thick stacks during the monologue from Roberta to her staff. These were cases provisioned to be directly under Roberta's direction. Vanguard didn't know what to say. He cleared his throat and straightened his tie, trying to act competent. Roberta's eyes popped back and, scoot, is what they implored of him, along with the shoe of her hand. Laura closed her notebook and rose from her chair. The police officers began dispatching orders to cover the vicinity. The room emptied. The last one out closed the door to Roberta's office.